believe it or not, but Generation 10 is definitely in development, and there may even be a hint in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as to what that generation is going to be. In this video, we're going to look at the previous hints that Pokemon has left behind in old games, hinting at their next generation, and try to uncover the mystery of where Generation 10 is going to be. Let's take a look. All right, so if you didn't know, Game Freak does have a pretty extensive track record in history of leaving hints behind in old Pokemon games. In Generation 1, we obviously got the hint through the anime, uh, which was Ho-Oh, appearing in the first episode of the Pokemon anime. And everyone got the game, finished it, we never saw that Pokemon. But then, of course, in Generation 2, we ended up getting Ho-Oh as part of the legendary Pokemon in the cover of Pokemon Gold version. When we go into Generation 3, some hints on that. Pacific Log Town is a small town built on wooden rafts and logs that float on top of a Corsola colony in Generation 3 in the south of Hoenn. Now, in Generation 2, Corsola's Pokedex entry actually indicates that in a South Sea nation, the people live in communities that are built on groups of these Pokemon. So, some foreshadowing there, Corsola's Dex description foreshadowing Pacific Log Town, which doesn't obviously give us the full scope of the game or anything, but certainly hinting at it. Then we've got Gen 5, the scientist Chorus says he's studying how to bring out the power of Pokemon to their full potential, which very much so could have been a hint towards Mega Evolution, which is bringing out the true most you know powerful form of that Pokemon with Mega Stones. Everyone remembers the strange souvenir in Pokemon X and Y. It says it's an ornament depicting a mysterious Pokemon that has been venerated as a guardian diet deity for an extremely long time uh in alola that's what it says in alola but in the previous game it was just saying that it was from you know a different region that we didn't know uh they they say it's not from kanto johto hoenn sino or even unova just the strange souvenir so ultimately it was a, a huge kind of hint or you know kind of shout out to the uh you know, the, the Tapus, basically, is what it ended up being. Uh, we also have the Sundials and the NPC near it saying, did you know there's Moondials? Uh, this is, of course, in Anastar, I believe, Anastar City. And then we end up getting Pokemon Sun and Moon shortly thereafter. In Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon, there was a poster for Gigantamax Toxtricity, which is bonkers. Uh, that was one of the, the most insane ones, is when Sword and Shield released Gigantamax Toxtricity, we found out that it was on a poster. <laughs> <laughs> in the game of Ultra Sun and Moon. And then in Sword and Shield, they had some pretty significant hints as well. Hotel Ionia in Chichester, or Surchester. There's a wallpaper of oranges grapes to the hallway blocked by a rope. And then in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl in Twin Leaf Town, they changed the color of the flowers in the town to be scarlet and violet colors. So some cool little tweaks there, right? Like they definitely hint these things in the games and there's definitely something of substance there for sure no doubt about it so where does this leave us for generation 10 what about gen 10 what could gen 10 be and again listen i totally know that we are a long ways away from generation 10 probably about three years away we're gonna get dlc for you know for scarlet and violet there's a you know and i'm not sitting here saying like oh i need gen 10 now i just got gen 9 i'm i just think it's fun to look forward we've seen in the past a lot of these things get hinted and then we don't know about them until later. I thought it'd be fun to start the investigation now to see if there are any hints. So after some digging, we'll put some source in the description, but after some digging around, we found a couple of really interesting things. So the first one being is that there's some art inside your house that says it's from a beautiful town in a different region, most likely one we haven't been to. So you've got this painting here. The painting is entitled Street, comma, Midday. It depicts a beautiful town in a different region. We don't know what that is. Could this be the you know street midday in another region that we're going to i don't know this is kind of a small little potential hint here but i think it's it's worth bringing up the big one here though is if you go into the art room in the naranja academy there's art of this mountain that a lot of people are speculating actually looks like something called urulu in australia so uluru is sacred to indigenous australians and it's thought to have started forming around 550 million years ago and i see that right like i look at the picture on the wall I see the, you know, kind of the picture uh, of, of what a Rulu looks like in Australia. And I say, okay, you know what? I see the connection there. This one's interesting. What if Generation 10 was in Australia? I feel like it makes so much sense, right? When you like go through the different generations and where we've been, obviously the first ones were based off of Japan. Then we had based off New York City with Unova. Then we go to, we go to France, we go to Hawaii. You know, we've, you know, we went to, to England and then obviously most recently in Spain. So like this idea of going to Australia is not that you know, far-fetched, right? You think of Australia, you think of places where, where we haven't been, right? 
Egypt is a cool one, but they clearly had some Egyptian influence here with the Spain-based region, with things like Espathra, right? Uh, but then you think of other places, like places in South America, I think could be very, very cool. So there's a lot of stuff that they could explore across the globe, but Australia is a big one, man. That's a big one. That's a very d uh, defining habitat for unique creatures. I mean, there's tons of memes about how, you know, everything's deadly in Australia. I think it could create some very, very cool Pokemon inspired designs going into a new generation. I think it'd be really cool to kind of explore the Outback. So that's just one theory. It's just one idea, one concept, whether or not that has anything to do with what we end up getting, we'll wait and see. So I came across this video from this guy, Aquatic Breakfast, who's kind of been trying to do some of their own research about this topic. And they kind of inspired me through some Reddit posts in the video to encourage you guys to try to figure this out with me because it is a really fun thing to kind of talk about. But th this, this breakdown is very interesting. When you actually in Area Zero, I think there's a lot to uncover here with Area Zero, but when you're in Area Zero, there's this bulletin board uh, where you encounter the professors and, and so on and so forth. And there's actually a shelf with a series of what seems to be gym badges. Like these look like gym badges to me. It's very, it's very evident that these are probably gym badges. Are these Generation 10's gym badges? They don't look like any of the badges from previous games if you compare them, and they look, you know, pretty simple. But I, I think that they're there for a reason. I think that they're, they're, they're important in this, in this context here. There's also some plaques above the badges, which may or may not be relevant, but we'll have to wait and see. They kind of have like these crown vibes on them. You know, we know Pokemon games release in pairs. There's two of those different uh, plaques. Maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe this is the next game you know, the, the logos or some sort of hint towards the logos and then the badges for the next generation. They're very detailed, right? Like they're very detailed. This, this is, I think this is here on purpose. The other thing too to mention is like time travel is really a thing now, right? Like we have legitimately a time machine. So these could be from a different time. Like this could be an ancient set of badges, right? Like it could be, it could be something totally different. So it's an exciting thing to look at. I think it's definitely worth mentioning and definitely something to consider like are these badges, what are these like medals or uh, whatever plaques, whatever they are, uh, and what is the significance there? So there's a bunch of other stuff too, like with Area Zero and some of the markings on the ground there and the logo to Scarlet and Violet and what some of those markings mean. I think that that's definitely something we can kind of look at on another video. But for now, I think it's fun to kind of parse through what we have in Scarlet and Violet and see if we can figure out maybe what the hints are. I think a lot of the times it is tough because you really need the future information to recognize the past kind of context, but um, maybe, maybe we'll stumble on something cool. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Be sure to check out the source in the description below if you wanna see the other channels that have kind of talked about this. And let me know if you guys have any thoughts in the comment section below. Again, I realize it's a little early here to be talking Generation 10, but nonetheless, there's gotta be some hints in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It's almost inevitable. We have the track record. So what is it hinting towards? Are we going to Australia or somewhere else? I don't know, but it's fun to talk about. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.